The health center is being kept busy treating sore throats and a variety of respiratory ailments. The center has added more personnel to handle the increased demand. Student Health Center Associate Director Karen Gordon Sosby says February has been a busy month. Um, we saw 180 patients yesterday, uh, which is, you know, about 20 to 40 patients more than normal. Most students have to wait a few days before they can see a doctor. Senior Christy Brantley says it's hard to get an appointment. It's Tuesday now, and I called Tuesday of last week, and this is the first appointment that they had. I like I had to wait an entire week. While it may be hard to schedule an appointment at the Student Health Center, representatives say you should start calling as early as 8 a.m. Even if you can't get an appointment, you should still call and talk to a registered nurse. She can then recommend over-the-counter medicine. From Bobcat Update, I'm Anicia Morales. The Associated Student Government elections are about a week away, but students may not have a lot of voting to do. Jacqueline Balin has more in this Bobcat Update. There are 60 seats in the Senate, but as of Friday, only 51 students filed to run for positions. A potential candidate must file his or her intentions with the Dean of Students' office. Two candidates have indicated they will run for student body president, and one filed for vice president. MassCom junior Melanie Ferrari and political science sophomore Samuel Hillhouse are running for president. MassCom student Culture Ray, who is Ferrari's running mate, is an unopposed candidate running for vice president. Ferrari and Ray supporters have been campaigning in the quad. I'm running for at-large senator. Um, I'm supporting uh, Mel Ferrari and Coulter Ray. Hillhouse says running for ASG doesn't seem to be a popular pursuit among students. It's a trend that we see. Uh, I think that there were over 20 senators that were appointed this year. That's a third of the student, uh, that's the third of the ASG. ASG advisor Kathy Weiser says she does not know why students won't run, but adds that the Senate positions will be filled. Weiser says after the elections, the new ASG president will appoint students to the Senate to complete the administration. For Bobcat Update, I'm Jacqueline Bailon. Veterans participating in the second annual Ride to Recovery bicycle tour rolled into town Tuesday afternoon for their first stop on a six-day journey across Texas. More than 100 veterans and their supporters converged on the embassy suites in San Marcos. The participating veterans have turned to cycling to boost their fundraising efforts to aid their rehabilitation and recovery programs. When the ride is finished in Arlington, Texas next week, the veterans will have covered 350 miles. Students should be aware of questionable internet job posters who are preying on the unemployed. The Better Business Bureau has released tips on how to spot scammers and safely find a job online. Always check the job's website and make sure it's legitimate and not just a similar name used to trick unsuspecting job hunters. Never pay up front fees or provide bank account information because actual employers won't ask for money. The BBB said avoid jobs that are too good to be true because they probably are. San Marcos has seen extremely high levels of pollen this spring. But will all the recent rain wash the allergens away? Whitney Paul has more in this Bobcat Update. High pollen levels are affecting people who suffer from seasonal allergies. Spring allergies are a result of pollen from trees, which can start pollinating any time from January to April, depending on the climate and location. Oak, for instance, hit record levels this month. I've had really like itchy eyes lately, really itchy throat and you know, coughing and sneezing and really runny nose and stuff. It's not good. I don't, I don't like it at all. Professionals say an extended amount of rain could temporarily knock the pollen out. However, a light drizzle could increase the pollination. Airborne pollen is usually the main cause of allergic reactions. At times, pollen levels could dip in San Marcos, but allergens can still blow in from neighboring cities. We're having um, one of the toughest pollen seasons that we've had in a long time. I think you can attribute that to all the rain we received back in the fall and all the rain we've received this spring. Mm -hmm. um, that has really fed the growth of all the trees um, and, and now a lot of the grasses as well. April is the month of showers, but we can be sure that once the rain goes away, the pollen is likely to be back again. For Bobcat Update, I'm Whitney Paul. New credit card restrictions make it tougher for Texas State students to get their hands on the plastic. Peter Naruski has more in this Bobcat update. Last May, Congress decided to crack down on credit card companies by regulating them more. New restrictions will be enforced, including some that will affect college students who are under 21. Minors are now required to have a cosigner when they apply for a credit card. And a lot of us kids are very responsible and 
uh, might get ourselves into a big mess. But if we have our parents there to back us up, then I think we'll be good. Some of the new regulations are designed to help cardholders acquire or keep good credit. For example, card issuers must now give 45 days notice before they can raise interest rates. Also, banks must now mail credit card bills no later than 21 days before payments are due. These restrictions could be beneficial to students who are learning to manage their credit. Uh, you know, college students, you know, oftentimes uh, they have a lot of needs and they don't have a lot of money. And so credit cards are perfect, but they often get them in trouble. Other restrictions went into place today that affect everybody, not just people under 21. Most of them make it harder for banks to increase interest rates and catch people off guard. For Bobcat Update, I'm Peter Narosky.